Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager, and I want you to know exactly the chronology of events. And that means when I am actually making this uh, recording to you of the fireside chat, which comes to you every week with a fire and with a dog. Otto needs no introduction. Otto has reached the level of needs no introduction. Not many dogs can say that. And as you can see, he's very moved by it. So I am talking to you the day after the United States elections. As of this moment, there is no declared winner, though it looks like it will be Joe Biden who will be the declared winner. And uh, I, I am torn over how to approach this because I can't ignore it. Obviously, it's such a it's an, a, a world event. The an American election is a world event. I mean, there's no denying it. Every, everyone in the world who follows any news follows uh, American politics, or at least certainly on a national level. So I would like to offer a few thoughts uh, to you uh, at this time in no order of importance and truly spontaneously because I have not yet come to peace with my own emotions on the issue. Uh, I, I wrote a piece, which I, I think you should all take a look at. It has now just been put up at Real Clear Politics. Real Clear Politics takes what it considers the best columns left and right. It is not a political place. It is a it, it takes the best articles in its opinion. And it took my piece, which is titled uh, Hatred of Trump versus Hatred of the Left. That in effect, that is what the vote in America was about. And I always make the point, I, when I talk about the left, I'm not talking about liberals. I'm always asked, what is the difference between liberals and leftists? So in a nutshell, uh, just a few examples. You can watch and should watch my PragerU video on the difference between liberalism and leftism or liberals and leftists, however it's titled. And I have an article on the Internet the same. On race, for example, liberals believe in racial integration. Uh, leftists believe in racial segregation. Leftists believe in all black dormitories. The Ku Klux Klan believes in all black dormitories. Liberals oppose all black dormitories. Liberals believe that we should all be race blind. Leftists believe that race blind is a form of racism. Liberals deeply believe in capitalism because it is the only way to lift massive numbers of people out of poverty. Leftists have always opposed capitalism. Let's see. Uh, the, the liberals believe, as Lincoln did, that America is the last best hope of mankind. Uh, the, the left believes that America is an inherently racist, deeply flawed society, and that the West is not any better than any other civilization. Liberals have always been the protectors of the West. Read Franklin Delano Roosevelt's speeches about the need to protect not just Western civilization, but what he called, and this is a liberal Democrat, liberal Democrat, however, Christian civilization. That's what he did. He said that fighting World War II, which he was the American president during that war, is a war to protect Christian civilization. Can you imagine an American president saying that today? Person would be impeached for offending non-Christians. I'm a non-Christian. I'm not offended at all. I think it was a good thing that Franklin Delano Roosevelt said that. Uh, so on race, on capitalism, uh, oh, freedom of speech. Liberals have been the greatest protectors, along with conservatives, of freedom of speech. The left has always suppressed freedom of speech. There is no example in history of the left having power anywhere and not suppressing free speech. It was true with Vladimir Lenin in the Russian Revolution in 1917. It is true on the American campus today. It is true on Twitter. It is true wherever the left gains power. So the, the, the irony is, as I look at the American election, 
liberals do not vote their values. I don't know of any example like this really in, in, in the history of democracies where people don't vote their values. Liberals vote left, but liberalism is much closer to conservatives than it is to leftism. But liberals are weak or naive and don't understand or don't want to fight the left which is the biggest battle there is. Anyway, watch my, uh, read my column, and uh, it will explain a lot of the American election. Now, one other thing. We have an election day. It's the first Tuesday in November in America. That's, that's our election day. Until very recently, that was it. You voted on election day. Then they allowed absentee ballots. So people who knew they would not be voting or could not be there to vote physically on uh, on election day or incapacitated and they couldn't get to a polling booth, they would request a ballot and they would have an absentee ballot, which had to be postmarked prior uh, or arrive prior, either one, whichever the state passed and be counted as a vote. Now you can vote in many states six weeks before Election Day, rendering Election Day a meaningless term, right? If you can vote in September and Election Day is November 3rd, it's absurd. It's not Election Day any longer. It's Election Month or Election Season, (laughs) but it's not Election Day. And then the worst the sending out of tens of millions of ballots to people who never requested them. A friend of mine, his two daughters got ballots in California, but seven years ago, eight years ago, they moved to Texas. They got two ballots in Texas too. Do you think anybody would ever catch them if they voted both in California and Texas? No one. How could there not be, forget deliberate Fraud. I'm not even talking about that. How could there not be a massive amount of nonsense when you send out ballots to people? What if they died in the meantime or moved in the meantime to another state as this man's daughters or or will register to vote at a poll and then send in their ballot as well? How do you know that they didn't do that? Is every ballot checked? In any event, whatever the case, uh, it, it, it invites results that will not be trusted by at least half the American people. And that's not healthy. So if you believe, as I do, that leftism has ruined everything it touches, I mean everything, the latest is sports and science, but before that, every institution, the university, the high school, the elementary school, music, art, architecture, late night television, the NFL, the NBA, that's the National Football League, the National Basketball Association, Major League Baseball, whatever it touches, it ruins. It's a force of chaos. It's a tsunami of destruction. And yet there is a generation that has grown up now in America. Not, not, I'm not talking about 20 year olds. I'm talking about my generation. Grew up after World War II and was not taught about the horrors of communism, only the horrors of Nazism. And so they don't know how terrible it is. They don't know how bigger and bigger government means less and less liberty for people. And they don't value freedom. People don't. I just read a poll that three quarters of Americans, I don't know if it's true, three quarters of Americans support a lockdown because of COVID-19. If that's true, it's truly a different America than the one I grew up in. I remind you that in 1968-69, there was a terrible virus in America called the Hong Kong flu. It killed 100,000 Americans. And... That's equivalent to 165,000 today, not so far from what has already been killed in America. 165,000 Americans in 2020 terms. 
nothing was locked down. Not one office, not one movie theater, nothing. That's when the famous Woodstock celebration took place. Not only was there no social distancing, the whole purpose of Woodstock was to have no social distance between you and your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever friend you met at Woodstock. Why is that? Why was America so different then? Because it understood there was a, there was a much more realistic view of life. Viruses come, people die, it is a tragedy, let us save all we can, but you cannot stop life because there is a virus. You cannot do that. Every leader in the world except Sweden's leaders has done that. This is not even political what I'm saying. Conservative leaders like in Britain and in Israel and in India, they did the lockdowns as well. You know why? They're all afraid to be a leader under whom there has been any death. They are afraid of what the media will say. They are afraid of what history will say under this pr prime minister or this president. Look at how many people died on their watch, which is what was obviously said about President Trump. I'm not exactly certain what he could have done to have stopped it. Uh, do they blame the Belgian prime minister for the deaths? Belgium has more deaths per million than America. Is the Belgian prime minister blamed for the deaths in Belgium? I doubt it. Spain as well. But anyway, uh, people have bought it. And I can't believe that my fellow Americans would, would, would so easily give up liberty and the ability of people to support themselves and bankrupt so many uh, business owners and so many people who have a salary. A man called my radio show today, just as an example, man has not earned a, a penny in the last seven months. You know why? He's a wedding photographer. That's it. There would be a lot more weddings if the government didn't suppress them. So you'll say, well, some people might get COVID. And I say, that's correct. And if you're afraid of getting COVID and think you'll die, unless you are over 80 or you have some co comorbidity condition, you know what the odds are? If I think it's either under 60 or under 70. Do you know how many, uh, uh, the percentage of people who die from COVID? It is a fraction of 1%, a small fraction of 1%. If you're under 30, you're more likely to die in a car crash than from COVID. Why can't they go to a wedding? And this guy make a living photographing it. This is a, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, this is a terrible time in, in, in American and world history. I was on a, a program with, uh, uh, yesterday, Patrick Ben David does a great show. He's a very interesting and deep man. And he had a, a, people with him. He has a very widely listened to or viewed podcast. And I was his guest for an hour. And he had these other guests who were, a number of whom were liberal. And they kept drilling me with questions. And they said, well, what about you and a mask? Do you wear a mask? And I said, well, I, I, uh, I spoke at a rally this past weekend in Beverly Hills, California, and I must have taken a photo with 50 people. I put my arm around them and they put their arm around me, 50 strangers. I must have hugged 50 strangers, shaken hands with 50 strangers, no masks. And I'll tell you why, I said because I don't believe that the purpose of life is to live. I think that the purpose of life is to live fully. You know whose purpose of life it is to live? Animals. Good old Otto here, all he wants to do is live. He doesn't think of living fully because that's not his task, he's an animal. He's got it easy in that way. I wanna live fully, of course I wanna live long, I love life. I'm crazy about it. And I enjoy it. And I, I, I love my family and my friends and my work and my grandchildren and my children. I mean, I've got a great life. But my only consideration is not, will I live longer? It's will I live fully? 
That's why I have been with friends every single week since since the uh, virus began. There's been no week that I've not been with friends, that I've not had people in my house or visited others at their house. I read the likelihood of dying from this disease. I used my faculty of reason. I'm not, a, I'm not a, an afraid human being to begin with, and I have lived life. There are people who've not le- left their house. There are people who've not allowed their children to play with other children for more than half a year. That is child abuse. That's right. That is pure, unadulterated child abuse. And Americans seem to have elected a man Uh, who uh, is for a national uh, lockdown that, well, he will do it or not. I don't even know if he has the capacity to do it. Well, at least I'm offering you what I hope is some clarity on the differences. Even if you differ with everything I've said, which is fine, at least we have clarity on where we differ. I don't live scared. It is a great way to live. I commend it to everyone. Okay, let's uh, let's get our first question, a video question. Hi, Dennis. My name is Isabella Valbuena. I am 17 years old and I currently reside in the Dominican Republic. My question for you is, as we have seen, Camilla Harris has recently published a video seemingly pushing for a Marxist agenda. How do we fight this compassionate narrative that will ultimately lead to tyranny as we have seen throughout history? Thank you and have a nice day. Isabella, how do you speak English so well? That, that is really impressive. Uh, I was in the Dominican Republic and I enjoyed it immensely. And I'm trying to get back to my place and I'm not having an easy time. And now the famous arm has entered our video. I have considered renaming the fireside chat. Welcome to Megan's arm. So I have seen that video and it it shows that the task of society is that everybody ends up. Not everybody starts out equally, which we would love to see, but ends up equal, which makes no sense. Does that mean that If I try out for the New York Yankees, I I should have as good a chance as as anybody else to to play third base for the New York Yankees. I don't I don't even understand that everybody end up in the same. That is communism. And it's it does lead to what she lovingly said, tyranny, or as we would say, a tyranny. That's correct. That is what it is. So, of course, that's what it always does. The French Revolution emphasized equality. The American Revolution emphasized liberty, which produced uh, which produced guillotines and which produced liberty. Okay, it's as simple as that. It is an extremely scary thing. And that's why I said that uh, I do fear the left because its record of the suppression of liberty is 100 percent. Liberals do not suppress liberty. Conservatives do not uh, suppress liberty. The left always does. It's very disconcerting that people don't learn from history. It is, but uh, it's undeniable that that is the case. So uh, it's it is worrisome, Isabella. Carl, 43, Killeen, Texas. Why can't racism be outlawed by legislation or executive order, such as terrorism, sexism, or fascism? Well, um, let's go through this. I don't know any law against fascism, to be honest. I don't know. Is there a law? I don't think there is. There's no law against communism. There's no... We don't have laws against isms uh, in America. We don't... uh, Regarding sexism, yes, you cannot discriminate on the basis of sex. So, in fact, we have the same thing with racism. You cannot discriminate on the basis of race. We have outlawed racism. So I'm not sure what your question is. They mean hate speech. <laughs> Probably. It means hate speech, but we don't have any other form of hate speech banned. Right. And we shouldn't. Otherwise, we don't have free speech because everybody will consider what they differ with hate speech. Why isn't it hate speech when leftists say that all whites are racist? Why is that not hate speech? That's as pure hate speech as exists. 
An entire group is, is uh, slandered. But of course, they don't consider it hate speech. By the way, I don't want to ban your ability to, to say that all whites are racist. And I want to have the ability to call you a hater and irrational and uh, a fool. So I have the right to call you a fool and you have the right to say all whites are racist. That's called free speech. So I don't understand what banning hate speech means. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. You can't say, I, I wish to kill so-and-so. By the way, in that regard, ironically, there I would like to see a tremendous effort made. The number of public figures who get death threats is, uh, is uh, quite uh, remarkable. Every one should be prosecuted. Every single one. Some should be jailed. But they're never followed. They, of course, they send anonymous emails or they do it anonymously on, on Twitter. Uh, but uh, it, it, they should, we should use the power of forensics and find who these people are. I don't care if you're doing it to a leftist or to a rightist. You cannot make a death threat. 99.9999, if not 100% of them, are nothing. I received death threats. I slept very well that night. Okay? People who want to kill you don't send you a letter in advance. That's just the way it works. But uh, it, it is disconcerting uh, to, uh, to receive them, and nobody should receive them. And yet people write them. That's, see, that's, that's real speech. That should be banned. That's, that's threatening violence. That's different. Francis, 23, Kansas City, Missouri. Hi, Dennis. Several leftist politicians have called for a mandatory buyback on guns. I was wondering what your thoughts are on this, and I was wondering what you would do if government officials came after your firearms. Let me just put this uh, very clearly. Uh, America allows people to own arms because it doesn't trust governmental power and it trusts people to, uh, to defend themselves. Now that we know that cities run by progressives like Seattle, uh, like, uh, like San Francisco, uh, like uh, Los Angeles, like Washington, D.C., like Chicago, uh, Philadelphia, they, these people will not stop violence from the left. They watch it. They do nothing against it. Therefore, this has been the largest sales of guns in American history this past year. The only reason is that vast numbers of Americans do not believe that where there is a progressive mayor, so-called progressive, progressive mayor or progressive governor, that uh, violent people will be stopped. That's it. So therefore, people want to be able to stop them on their own. I don't want to uh, incapacitate people's ability to defend themselves and their loved ones. So uh, uh, it is uh, a compulsory buyback, which is the same thing as confiscation, correct? It's just you're, you're getting some money for what is confiscated. Uh, will not work in the United States of America, and it, it would be the beginning of violent confrontations between authorities and Americans. I, I pray that never happens, but that's what would happen. There is no tyranny in the last hundred years that the, that the first thing it did, didn't do, was uh, take away uh, people's guns. The Nazis did that first thing, communists did that first thing, and uh, in a free society, people should be able to defend themselves. Xiji, X-I-Z-H-I, so I guess it's Xiji. That's right, Xiji. 24, Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Hi, Dennis. I'm an American citizen for a year. And because how crazy this year's, year was, I started to read Bible. If I can't be a faithful person, I can still learn from this amazing book, perhaps the greatest book, period. Here's an issue that bugs me tremendously. Coming from a secular background from China, East Asian culture, I started to see how people worship beauty and become morally corrupt. That in some way, it reminds me of the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. But I also find myself to be a hypocrite since I realize that's how I saw women too. I become really angry of myself and the Asian culture so angry that I have chest pain last night. Wow, that's really angry. 
at yourself. But I don't know how I can solve this issue. Please advise. So I wish we could speak so I could get this more clearly about worshiping beauty, worshiping anything but but God and God's will, like the Ten Commandments, is 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 what we call idol worship. But and there are people who worship beauty, but worshiping beauty is not the same as valuing beauty. That is the human condition. Beauty matters to human beings, and I don't see why that's a terrible issue. That's the way we're built. And yes, if you, you're a man, obviously, I assume from this, that's the way you see women. Welcome to the human race. The, in the land of the blind, beauty doesn't matter. In the land of the sighted, beauty matters. In, in the Bible, God describes Sarah, uh, the matriarch Sarah, Abraham's wife, as particularly beautiful. Describes Rebecca, the second matriarch, uh, as also particularly beautiful. Beautiful uh, to look at and beautiful of form. Uh, uh, it describes David as particularly uh, good looking. Uh, because that's the human condition. It's unfair. That I will, I will totally agree with. It's unfair. But a lot of things are unfair. It's unfair that this person has better brains. It's unfair that this person has better athletic ability. It's unfair that this person has more beauty. That's the way it is. If you worship it, you are pretty superficial. But if you value it, if it means something to you, you're normal. <laughs> That's the way it works. Would you rather have a world in which it meant nothing, where, where people didn't care how they looked? Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I don't, I, it strikes me as uh, a, 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 a very unappealing world. And uh, in the human species, female beauty is generally more important than male beauty. Uh, uh, if, you if you told a man, I, I can get a date with you with a model, the odds are he would say, okay, I think, uh, I think I'll do that. Where if you said to a woman, uh, listen, I got two guys. One is a male model and the other guy is, uh, does really well financially. Which would you like to date? Overwhelmingly, the woman would say the guy who was doing really well financially. Whereas on the, the, for the male, I got a really wealthy woman and a beauty. Which would you like to date? He'll take the beauty. That's the way it is. By the way, what I am saying is almost tension filled. This is how sick we have become that if it, the, that normal is now unutterable. Oh, Prager comes out with the sexist comment that men value beauty more than wealth. Well, they do. That's why so many men uh, will, will uh, date a woman who has no money, but who has beauty. Whereas women don't think, first of all, oh, he's gorgeous. Okay. Now, it doesn't hurt. If a guy is gorgeous, it is an asset. I got to admit. That's why I try to earn money. Kidding. I... <laughs> <laughs> Not fully kidding, Mod moderately kidding, because <laughs> I I have earned money, but I can't. I'm not in the uh, I'm not in the uh, Bill Gates realm of of, uh, of, of money. But uh, men know this, of course they know. The vast majority of men are okay looking. There are very very few truly ugly men, and there are very very few uh, truly gorgeous men. Very few. But there are very many really good-looking women. They don't know this, the women. I mean, most good-looking women don't think they are, which is it's a very charming aspect of, of femalehood. But uh, nevertheless, there are. And that is the way it is done. In peacocks, it's the opposite. Male peacocks are gorgeous, and female peacocks are pretty dull-looking. Okay, so that's the way it works. God, it, it, it's, it's, do you know, I, I used to say on my radio show, I get paid well to, to say the obvious because you have been taught that, the, see, there's a war against truth on the left. To say that men value beauty is, to, is, is a sexist statement. That's what they would call it. It's a sexist statement. What does that mean, sexist statement? The question isn't, is it sexist? The question is, is it true? That's why there's a war against truth at the university. He's sleeping. 
See, for Otto, the election has not been a source of tension. He, and that's why it's good to have him around. He helps put things in perspective. Biden, Trump, Democrat, liberal, it's all the same. He snores through it all. All right, Otto, you're the man. How are we doing on time? 31. Uh, the old inner clock worked. <laughs> that was important, that beauty discussion. All right, I'll have a lot more to say another time. In any event, these are difficult times. We will prevail. I do believe that. The, there are very many uh, silver linings in the American election. And I'll deal with that in future fireside chats and much more. I'm Dennis Prager. Thanks for being with me. Thank you for watching this video. To help keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation.